Hey, welcome back. Where I'm building a Rans S21. Um, this is episode 25, where I'm going to do some of the preparation work on the firewall uh, and then attach some wires to a couple of the components. Uh, this is going to be a fairly short video. I'm waiting for some parts for my trim servo installation and I'm also waiting for some hinge material to do a, on the forward floor, uh, floor, forward baggage floor to do a battery cover. So this is just a short video to kind of pick up some things while I'm waiting for parts. Uh, interesting, a, a side note, my EAA chapter, uh, several of us visited the Orange County Tower for a tour. Uh, Orange County is a Class C airport, uh, very busy. Those guys hustle in there. Uh, there's two tower frequencies, one for general aviation, one for commercial. They come in on parallel runways. And then, of course, a ground frequency. And a lot of these guys are double dutying, dutying, uh, is that a word? Maybe. Uh, a couple frequencies. Um, but it was fascinating to watch. Uh, what I did pick up, this was kind of unofficial because they're not really HR people, not authorized to talk a lot about it. But uh, they are understaffed. They've been understaffed for a while. Doesn't look like there's any effort to really get the staffing up. Um, the controllers for Orange County don't come out of training. They have to come from another tower. Not a lot of people requesting to go to Orange County because it's it's a busy and very stressful situation. Uh, also asked about the hiring process, which is kind of interesting. And it was almost like a military process where when you take the position, you spend four months in Oklahoma City for training. Uh, and then you might get assigned a tower somewhere other than your home city. So it's almost like joining the military and, and getting an assignment. From what I gathered, uh, these guys weren't official spokespersons for the, for the FAA or for the, for the tower positions, but this is just kind of what information I picked up. Um, but interesting day. If you ever get a chance, I would visit a tower. They do do tours. Got a call in advance. Um, and it's fascinating uh, when you get up there and just seeing what they're doing. Um, but... Side note, but with that, let's, let's start working on the plane. The next firewall item I'm going to put in is the uh, mixture cable and throttle cable eyeball firewall fittings. They kind of come apart. These go in the middle, and they just sandwich into the firewall. And they go, there's some dent outs in the firewall, and they apparently go right in between. You drill an inch and an eighth hole. I used a step bit and they just screw on. And then there's a second screw here that comes loose that you can run your cable through it and clamp it back up. I'm continuing on with my firewall attachments and set up. There's a 5 16th hole that is drilled, it is for the heater cable. There's a measurement coming in four and a quarter, four and a half down, six and five eighths, and drill the hole. So that went pretty smooth. Uh, now I'm putting the uh, cabin heater in. There's actually a separate parts page for the cabin heater parts. They're in the firewall forward section. Miscellaneous parts. And that is going to install right here. You've got a couple different diagrams to work off of. I cut a uh, two and a sixteenth inch hole. I ended up using a uh, jigsaw with a metal blade on it. I had a two inch hole cutter, but it was for wood, so I, I would have ruined it. And this just fits in that two and a sixteenth inch hole. Then you level it and you put two uh, number 11 holes for um, three sixteenths bolts, nuts and bolts. After you bolt this in with the 3 sixteenths on either side, uh, that leaves you this little flap mechanism that is going to go to a cable, which is going to go through this bracket. This bracket actually gets riveted in with some big old honking stainless steel 62s. Uh, they're the same size as a 3 sixteenths, so they're big. I had to set my uh, compressor up to 95 pounds to pull them. And it did take two pulls. It took two, two trigger pulls. Uh, and there's also a uh, washer on the other side of these, a, a basic 3 16th washer to give it a little extra support. And then this guy just goes in with, with a cotter pin and a couple thick washers. And that sets up everything for your heater except for the cable, uh, which we'll put on later because that's got to go through the panel. 
I'm going to install some more firewall stuff. Uh, there are these four holes drilled to 516th for coax grommets. Then on the figure page, I give you where they go. It's an inch and a quarter up from the cage bar in a one inch square pattern. So I come over to my bar. I figured out where my cage bar was. One inch up is the bottom right, then a one inch pattern. Uh, that's a mistake that I have to fill in with a stainless steel rivet. Um, so you've got those there. And they say it's for the coax grommets. You come to your parts list and diagram, and they do have some 3 16th rubber grommets, which are here, and they're number 11 in the parts, but they also do not show the four coax grommet holes, so I'm going to make the assumption that these 3 16th grommets are the ignition grommets, and that because they're listed here, and there's no picture, of where they go that that's probably what they are again making assumptions but we'll see if that works out okay the grommets fit uh, so 3 16th grommets fit in a 5 16th drill out the next thing they have you do on the firewall is this builder fabricated install with grommet for wire pass through it's called a firewall closeout and you can see the diagram of the firewall and it's below this this last little punch out here so as I come over to my firewall I see these two but where that other punch out is they've got a hole here so this was this pass through is supposed to be down here according to the manual but it looks like they've pre-drilled something for me and I'm assuming this is that pass through um, so it I'm assuming rather than fabricate something, there's there's something that goes here. So this is just my thinking process as I'm going through this. That doesn't really agree with this because where this punch out is here is where that pre-drilled hole is. So I'm going to find something that fits that, that uh, punch out. I've decided I'm going to run some wires while I'm waiting for my trim servo hardware to come in from RANS. Uh, the first wire I'm going to run up to the panel uh, is my f low fuel indicator light. Uh, it's, I'm guessing it's a one amp light. Uh, it comes with a, about a 22 gauge, maybe a 24 gauge wire with it. Uh, 4313 says I can use a 22. I don't like running 22s. They're just so small and fragile. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a 20 up which I've already done up to my panel and I've bundled it up and I'll wait for the panel to come in. The next wire I'm going to run is my fuel pump wire. Uh, interesting in the manual it talks about a 20 amp circuit but for aviation use a 10 amp circuit. The pump itself only puts out 5 amps. I certainly would not want this on a 20 amp circuit if it's only putting out 5 amps. So I'm pretty sure we'll have this on a 10 amp. Again, 4313 says I can use an 18 or even a 20 because it's only about a three foot run up. Um, the manual says it recommends a 16, but I'm assuming that's for the 20 amp circuit, which again, I don't know why you'd put a 20 amp on a 5 amp pump. Something, again, it's not my expertise, but I don't know why. Uh, 4313 says I can use an 18. I've got 18 and I've got 14. I don't have any 16. So I'm just going to run a 14. Uh, you can never go wrong with a little heavier wire. I'll still have it on a 10 amp circuit uh, and the 14 is still easy to maneuver and I'm not going to worry about the extra weight for, for three feet of wire. So that's what I'll do. And you've got, as I look at this, you've got the positive on top and I've already taken the, the nut off for the, the negative down here. Well, that's a pretty good place to end. Uh, just a short short video doing some of the miscellaneous stuff, waiting for some parts. Uh, next video, I think I'm going to do the trim servos, the baggage door, uh, baggage floor with the door in it for the battery, uh, maybe some other things. But uh, that section took 10.3 hours, brings my build time to 792.9 hours, and we're just keep moving along. So thanks for watching, and remember, dream it, just build it.